Carl Rove with me this morning. Welcome back, Carl. Always good to see you. People are voting with their feet. OK, how does that translate to the 2024 election? Well, it means that red states are likely to get somewhat redder and blue states are likely to get somewhat bluer. You can see this in two places. Florida, uh, in 2022, for the first time in the history of Florida, there were, became more registered Republicans on the voter rolls than Democrats. Mm -hmm. Saw it in Texas, where we don't register by party in Texas, but there was a survey done of people who had registered to vote in Texas for the first time since November of 2020, after, they, after the 2020 election, there were roughly 30, mid-30s Republican, high-20s Democrats. But the generic ballot for the 2022 election was 59 Republican, 41 Democrats. So a lot of those new immigrants are economic uh, immigrants, and it's going to continue. I happen to be in Los Angeles on Saturday, lovely home in Beverly Hills, uh, wonderful job creator, wealth in, uh, creator, wonderful family. And they just moved to Dallas. They were going to keep their place in, in Beverly Hills for a while, but they're moved, they've moved to Dallas. And with them, jobs and uh, future economic growth in the state of Texas. Wow, that's an interesting story. Next one for you, Carl. Former President Trump claimed that he's under, quote, total assault because he's leading the 2024 GOP polls. He also took another swipe at Florida Governor DeSantis. He said DeSantis is failing badly and that his political career is over. All right, Carl, conventional wisdom has it that Trump walks away with the primaries. What do you see happening? Well, I, first of all, isn't it interesting? If you're, if you're walking away with the primary, why are you taking a shot at the guy who is behind you? Why aren't you focused on the general election? And why are you, why, why are you wasting your time on somebody that you're already saying is a loser? Uh, I think it's because Donald Trump on some level understands that he is in a horse race. Remember, in 2004, who was leading at this point? For the nomination of the Democratic Party, it was Howard Dean of Vermont. Who was leading at this point in the 2008 sweepstakes? Hillary Clinton. Who was leading just a matter of days before the first votes were cast in Iowa and the Republicans in 2012? Newt Gingrich. So, you know, that right now the leaders are Biden and Trump. And it's because they are the biggest figures in their respective parties. But it doesn't mean that they, are, that they have a lock on it, particularly on the Republican side, where Trump does not have the advantage of the White House like Biden has in his primary contest. A last one for you. Uh, RNC chair Ronald McDaniel says Republicans were unable to sway independence in the 2022 midterms. Watch this real fast. Roll it. The biggest takeaway we're taking is independence did not break our way, which has to happen if we're going to win in 2024, which usually that's what causes that red wave. And abortion was a big issue in key states like Michigan and Pennsylvania. And so the guidance we're going to give to our candidates is you have to address this head on. What, do you agree with that analysis, that, that abortion was a, was a real problem for Republicans in 2022? It was and it wasn't. She's right. It was, it was a, a, an issue in Michigan where there was a constitutional amendment on the ballot. But let's take a look at a couple of states and see if we can't find the real problem here. <laughs> Arizona, the Republican tre state treasurer gets 190,000 votes more than the Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate and 120,000 votes more than the Republican nominee for governor. She's at the bottom of the ticket. The treasurer, they're at the top of the ticket. Georgia, Brian Kemp gets 400,000 votes more than the Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate, Herschel Walker. And in Ohio, a very strong pro-life governor, Mike DeWine, wins by 25 points in what used to be a battleground state, while the Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate wins by six. Endorsed by Donald Trump, endorsed by Donald Trump, endorsed by Donald Trump, endorsed by Donald Trump. Trump backed lousy candidates, lackluster candidates for the Republicans. Ohio was an example. I mean, the, the governor wins by 25, secretary of state by 21, attorney general by 20, the treasurer and the auditor by 18, and the guy who is the front and center Trump candidate wins by six. That says that not only are we losing, did we lose independence in critical races in 2020, but we had some Republicans who said enough is enough. I'm voting for my state treasurer in Arizona, but I'm not voting for either the Republicans running for senator or governor. Okay. Carl Rove, I'll leave it right there, but we do hope to see you again real soon. Thanks, Carl. Gotcha. Thank you.